Hello, it's Mati from Phoebisoft and today I'm going to show you how to make our enemy to shoot in series. So here we've got our scene, you can go to our website and the link will be in the description. You can just go there and download the package to have this scene that you are seeing at the moment. So you can just import the package and you will start off with whatever we've got at the same time. We've got our player here, we've got the bullet and we've got our enemy. Maybe I will get rid of the bullet from the scene and let's create some script for our enemy in order to shoot it. We can go inside the scripts. We already have two, the camera follow and the player movement, which is not necessary to have, of course, in this example. So let's create a new one. Right click, create and C sharp script and I call it enemy series shooting. Now we need to attach this script to our enemy. So just drag and drop it to our enemy object. And here we have it. So now we need to open it. Now I'm going to get rid of all the comments because most of the time they are not needed at all. And we need to make a reference to our prefab, to the bullet prefab. So let's make it public, why not? And it will be of type game object and let's call it bullet prefab. So once we've got it, we probably need some more fields. We don't need to make them public. I'm going to create them public just for you so you can manipulate with the values that we are going to transfer into the script. That's why I will be making them public. But if I was doing it myself, once I experiment with all the speed and everything, then probably I would change them into the private fields. But it's up to you. They can stay as public, it's not the problem. So now let's create the public and we need to know the time between the series because we want this series to be repetitive. So one series will go off, after a couple of seconds will go another one. So we need to specify this time. So the time probably most of the time we will be specifying it with the float value and let's call it time between series. And I think I will put like two seconds for now. And now we need some time between each bullet because we will have few bullets in the series. So it will be next public and float A again. Now let's call it time between bullets. And I think I will put some small value to it like 0.2f. And the last probably thing that we are going to need is how many actually bullets we want to shoot in one series. It could be of type int this time because we can't really shoot half of a bullet. So that's quite reasonable to make it integers. So I type int and I'll call it how many bullets in series. And let's say we want to start with five bullets in a series. And now let's create um, the function. We could do it in two ways actually. We can just create some counter or create a coroutine. And I think that creating a coroutine is a bit simpler in this circumstances. And I think we don't really need this update method. So we get rid of it. And here let's make a coroutine. And the coroutine is of type I enumerator. So let's type I enumerator and I'll call it shoot coroutine. All the coroutines need to return something and in this case we are going to return yield return new wait for seconds. Why we are doing it? We are doing it to specify what should happen first and after it we will specify what should happen after some time. So here let's put some value. This value will be our time between the bullets. So let's copy it and paste it here straight away. In our coroutine, what do we have to start with? We need to specify some counter for our bullets. How many has been shot already? So let's type integer i equals to zero. 
we usually are using i as a variable for iterating through the loop because now we are going to create this loop so we can use a while loop and now inside we are using this i which needs to be less than all the bullets that we want to shoot in that series and this variable we've got here so let's copy it and paste it here and now we are opening our while loop and now we are starting off with creating our bullet so we are we have to create a new game object call it bullet and now we need to instantiate it so we're calling instantiate method and our prefab is called bullet prefab so we have to instantiate it and we are going to specify some parent object for our bullet which will be our enemy so we just can type transform and that's it we probably want to destroy this bullet after a certain time so that it's not on the scene even if we can't see it because it takes some memory so we can destroy it let's say after two seconds so let's type bullet because we want to destroy the bullet and let's destroy it after two seconds now we want to get this timer once it is shot we want to increase our i we are increasing the i actually we could do it before it wouldn't make any difference really we've got our our while loop and now we need to call our coroutine so this is like one series yes but now we want to shoot it in some repetitive timer as well unity offers us a very easy method which is called invoke repeating but in invoke repeating we have to type the method that should be called as a string and the coroutine is not great when it comes to that calling so that's why we need to create a separate method and for example call it shoot and here we will call our coroutine and we have to start it with a special keyword and now we have to specify a name of that coroutine so let's type shoot coroutine and now in our start method we are going to call this method so as you can see we had to use a really some function in between in order to make it working so in start we are typing invoke repeating and here we need to specify the method name as a string as you can see so now we have to specify shoot method then there is a time when do you want this invoke start and we want to get it started straight away and then there is a repeat rate and the repeat rate is our time between series so this is what we are going to paste in here so let's save it and of course this is not done yet because our bullet doesn't have any script on it but i will just show you how this is going to work at the moment so let's click on our enemy and here we have to provide our bullet prefab so let's go to the prefabs and add the bullet to it let's press play and see we are waiting and nothing happens if we collapse you can see that five bullets has been created and after two seconds it will be the same why because if you could see it we've got time between series is two and in our script we made it so it gets destroyed after two seconds so if i make it bigger then we could see 10 different bullets on the scene so let's wait there will be five of them then another few but in between some of them are getting destroyed but where are those bullets they are in the same place where our enemy is so maybe because our enemy has some aim object on it which is in front of it maybe we can use it to instantiate our bullets in that place 
So let's do it. We are going to make a reference to this aim. So let's make a public and we can use transform straight away and call it aim. And now instead of transform, we can use aim. So save it and now we have to drag and drop it. Just click on enemy and here let's add aim to our, our aim field. Let's press play and now we should be able to see our bullets in here. So everything is working fine but probably you would like to see these bullets shooting out, don't you? So in that case, because our bullet has a rigid body component on it, we are going to move it through the forces or velocity if you wish. So let's go back and here we will just get the components of rigid body in our bullet when we instantiate it. So here let's go to the bullet and let's call get component and we need to get the rigid body component and now we can type velocity and we have to add some vector to it and we know this enemy will be shooting left so we can add this vector straight away so let's type new vector it could be two why not and the first value the x value has to be negative so let's put like minus let's say 4 and let's type 0f when it comes to the vertical axis let's save it and see if this is working i will minimize it and press play and now you can see that five bullets are being shot and after some time that we specified another series is shooted out of course you can move your bullets with standard transform component you don't have to use forces but this is the way i wanted to create in this example as with anything else there are plenty of different ways of doing stuff so you can experiment with it and do it as you would like it to be so of course now you can change those values make it so that it's being shooted like very fast and of course you could make it even more interesting by just getting some random values in our velocity so they are being shot left and a bit up or down that might be quite interesting to be honest so how would you do it i would just type here random and range and now we need to specify let's say a value from 10 to minus 6 let's say I will put an F here as well and now we have to add another random and range and here we will choose the value for the vertical axis which might be like minus 4F to 4F and now we are getting random values for our vector so that the bullets will be shot in some random direction but still going to the left. So let's press play and see how that is going to look like and I think this is much more interesting, isn't it? So I hope you enjoyed it and you liked it and that you are going to experiment with it on your own. And don't forget you can visit our website to download this project. So keep learning and I see you in the next one.